Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Colleen and I am really pleased that you're following along. I wanted to um, come to you today and talk about uh, a problem that canners have at this time of the year here in January. We're not quite to the 15th yet and um, the problem that I'm having and I think most canners face is that in January we have a lot of empty jars and that is a hard prospect if you like to have your cupboards filled with um, food that you've prepared that you know what's in. So today we will be uh, filling some of those empty jars with um, cherry jam, some um, beautiful, I have some beautiful cherries that I froze for just this occasion and I'm looking forward to getting to it. So I'll gather everything up and I'll be right back after this. So I've thought about, I think there's around three quarts, two and a half or three quarts of um, cherries in here and all I did with them to prepare them for the freezer was to take the pits out and um, of course the stems have to come out at the same time and then I just um, put them on sheet trays in the uh, freezer and once they're frozen then I dump them all into a gallon bag and just uh, keep them that way and at this time of the year we are faced with um, all of these things that are in our freezer that could be in jars that's that's taking up space in our freezer but also they tend to get farther and farther down in the freezer the longer we leave them and because I don't want there to be any chance that I'm going to lose this food um, that was really expensive to buy because we don't grow cherries where we live so we have to um, bring them in from out of town and that's expensive so uh, not wanting to waste this um, precious fruit I cared for it froze it and now I'm going to use a pseudo jam recipe which is a uh, fruit pectin here in Canada I don't know if you have Serto where you live, but uh, good fruit pectin. And today I'm going to be using liquid fruit pectin uh, for this recipe. And the first thing I have to do is to come up with four cups of finely minced cherries. So I'm going to be throwing these in the food processor. And when I've got them all processed, I will come back to you and we'll move on to the next step because making jam and jelly are the easiest things I think that a canner can take on as a beginner project and it certainly doesn't take that much time if you're an experienced canner to uh, whip through and um, get this um, into jars so um, I, I will be right back so I have uh, measured out four cups of fruit which I have uh, finely mashed in my food processor and I'm going to dump this into a big heavy bottomed pot that uh, will fit everything because this is a sugar heavy recipe and so I'm going to need to measure seven cups of sugar into this fruit. Now there's all kinds of recipes out there that you can find that um, will help you to have reduced sugar. And I have to quit talking so I can keep count. Four, five, six, seven. Now I've counted out uh, seven um, cups of sugar in this recipe. And I'm just going to start to stir it around so that the fruit is completely covered and the, uh, the sugar isn't visible. And I can smell the beautiful cherries. This is going to be such a treat to have something new in our, in our pantry. We tend to do the same things over and over again. And I 
only that I didn't have time when the cherries came to do up any cherries so um, I'm excited to have these and I think that we'll also uh, make some cherry jelly and you might be interested in sticking around for that so I'm going to add to this a quarter of a cup of uh, real lemon uh, lemon juice from the bottle and I'm going to put this onto the stove and I'm going to bring it to a full rolling boil. And I'm going to stir it uh, during part of that time to make sure that the sugar isn't sticking to the bottom of the uh, pot. And because I don't want any crystallization, I'm going to, it's a rainy or a snowy day here today. It's quite warm. I, in fact, I can see snow melting, which is really odd for this time of the year. So I'm just going to try and make sure that all of my sugar crystals are underwater so I don't have to worry about my uh, sugar returning to its original form. Now onto the stove we go and I will get the Cerdo out. So I'm using Cerdo uh, liquid pectin today instead of the dry Cerdo. Uh, it's made for gems and jellies and it, this pectin um, it all, it comes with a package with a, an instruction sheet. But the instruction sheet doesn't give instructions for um, cherry jam. It gives instructions for raspberry, apple or crab apple, apricot, cranberry, claret, strawberry and orange marmalade. So I went online to bernardin.ca and I found a recipe for uh, the cherry jelly and it's going to require two packets um, of this fruit pectin, this liquid pectin. So if you've not worked with a pectin before you're going to want to do a little bit of research. Um, get yourself uh, a box of Cerdo at, or fruit pectin, ask um, somebody that you know what kind of pectin they use and do a little research because some of them you can actually um, get away with a lot less sugar than the one I'm using today and um, there are different brands of them so people have a different degree of success with different ones so don't be afraid to do a little bit of homework. Most of the major companies like Bernardin and Care have recipes online and um, certainly in Canada, the Cerdo brand uh, company uh, has all kinds of recipes online so you can follow their directions and I'm sure any uh, fruit pectin you would buy would be the same. So I'm just going to prepare these, get the top um, of the packets cut off because once the jam comes to a full rolling boil, I'm going to add the fruit pectin and then I have to let it come to a boil again and boil it hard for one minute and then it'll be ready to put in the jars. So it's not a complicated process. It's just a matter of following the canning rules, the, the rules laid out by the pectin company and you'll be fine. So here we go. This is what canners do in the off season. We still can. Now I'm keeping a close eye on my pot of jam that's on the stove and I'm popping over there once in a while to stir it and I have my water bath canner um, heating up over there and I also have my uh, seals coming to uh, a yeah, high temperature, not a boil but a high temperature because I don't want to have any product failures. I've never had a product failure with uh, four jars canning lids and that is what I've been using now pretty much exclusively uh, for the past year and I am proud to be one of their partners and they're a fantastic uh, family that has um, kind of taken over the canning lid uh, world with online canners and um, I will leave a link in the description box below because if you follow that link and you purchase any any canning lids off their site you will get 10% off using the discount code that's in the description box below. Uh, I, if you're living in Canada the shipping will cripple you 
but the product is really good. So for my American friends, um, definitely take advantage of that um, information below. And I'm going to go stir my jam. You can see my uh, cherries and sugar have come to a full rolling boil. So now I'm going to start to put in the cerdo and I will try and stir and put in the cerdo. And you will notice that it cools it quite a bit. And right away, um, though, it comes back to a boil. And this is what we want it to do. And once, once we get it back to a full boil, I've got some on my fingers, so now they're slippery. But once it comes back to a full rolling boil, we are going to time off one minute. A full rolling boil is a boil that cannot be stirred down. And this one definitely cannot be. I should say too that I added a half a teaspoon of butter to this to help with the foaming because I noticed it was foaming quite a lot. So I'm counting now. It, uh, as I said earlier, uh, making jam is one of the easiest things that you can do and it doesn't require an awful lot of uh, fancy equipment. Um, for that matter, you could use a pot the size of this one to uh, can the pint jars in. You just need to have a barrier between the bottom of the, this pot and the bottom of the jars. So if you're stuck and don't know what to put in there, you can just put a dish towel in the bottom and it is enough of a barrier it stops the bottom of the jars from bubbling up and smacking down on the bottom of the pot and stops breakage that way. Then once we have our minute timed off, we're just about there, then I'm going to move this over to the counter and we'll carry on with the next step. There we are. See you at the counter. Okay, so I have it off the stove over here on the counter and I am going to continue for about five minutes to stir it, you know, maybe once or twice a minute. And what that does is help the fruit. The fruit has been heated and, and inside the fruit there was air and the air, um, of course, heated air wants to rise to the top and uh, we want to take that foam off, that heated air, because it just makes a better presentation in our jams and jellies. There is no problem with leaving the foam on that I'm aware of, um, as long as you're um, going to put them into the canner at the end of this. We used to, when we used wax to can, we used to make sure all the foam was off because it left an uneven speckling in the wax, and the wax we used over and over again. So maybe I should clarify that a little bit. So years ago, for jams and jellies, we used to buy paraffin wax. It came in bars, um, much like chocolate, and you would put it into a pot, the same pot from year to year, because it was hard to clean it out of the pot once you started to use it and you would melt that down and that's how we would seal the top of our jars. We'd put the hot jelly or jam into the jar, then we would pour enough paraffin wax on there to create a complete seal. It stuck to the edge of the jar and it's, it um, completely coated about a half an inch um, deep of wax on, on the jar. So then when you wanted to use it, you had to pierce the edge um, and take the wax disc off and then you would be able to use the jam or jelly. So we don't do that that way anymore, but that's how we used to do it. I'm just going to use a little strainer and I've brought the foam to one side of the pot and I'm just removing the foam. And once you've got the biggest part of it off there, and this isn't something you have to go back and do again, and I'm going to stir and the reason that I'm doing this is that I don't want the 
the fruit to float. We want to give it a chance to cool a little bit, get used to where it's at, and um, in order to do that, we just need to practice a little patience, and I'm pretty happy with that. Tonight this will be going on, or tomorrow morning, on some toast, because there's no reason to waste it. It's delicious. And there we go. I have in the sink behind me my jars that have been uh, freshly washed, and they are um, laying there in the hot water. And I am just going to grab them out. The recipe said this should make about eight uh, one cup jars or eight eight ounce jars and uh, so that's how many I've prepared. If there's any left over it'll probably just go into the uh, foam bowl and uh, we'll use it up right away. I'm just going to take a few of them out at a time and I'm going to use my ladle and my funnel and I'm going to start to ladle these jars and you want these to come up between the half inch and quarter inch mark. They can be quite close to the top. Go and we'll just move along. This being able to pan in January is what uh, gets the crazy canners to calm down. No, being able to can in January takes a lot of pressure off of a, a canner because when the fruit and vegetables start to come in, they come in fast and furiously and you're not always able to keep up, but you know what your family needs to get through the year. Now, we still have a few jars of huckleberry jam and strawberry jam left, but we didn't have any cherry because I hadn't taken care of cherry yet. So this will be a nice treat for us. I hope everyone is uh, having a good day. Let's dump these over because they're full of water and uh, that your year has started out really well and I look forward to um, lots of plans in the coming season. I hope everybody uh, is uh, in the same boat that we are finally able after a couple of years absence to make plans and go on vacations and um, be back together with family members we haven't seen for a long time. So I'm feeling quite excited for this coming season. I am also a marriage commissioner in our province. So I have uh, lots of weddings booked and coming up. So that helps to keep me busy in retirement. And I'm really happy to have that to do because I found that I was quite um, bored in retirement when I first retired. I had a full-on um, job that kept me busy for 30 years and really busy and um, so to go to you know having nothing but leisure time was very, very foreign for me. So I'm glad to have a few things to do. I still like to get out and volunteer, and uh, they still find value in my experience at the museum where I worked, and so I'm happy to do some volunteer time there, as well as a bit of work. And yes, I probably have not enough for another jar, but certainly um, some left over. So into the jelly mix it goes. I'm just going to take a damp paper towel and I'm going to run around the rim and grab my lids. 
and dump the boiling or near boiling water off the lid. And do these one at a time. My four jar seal on. Whew, warm. And I probably do it a little more finger tight than is recommended. So just finger tight. I feel like I may do it a little tougher than that. Um, but I've never had a failure, so and there we go. I shouldn't say I've never had. They are so few that um, I couldn't report them. I think in the last year I might have had one failure. And when I took the seal off, I noticed it was not a four jars seal. It was another brand and it had a, a piece of the gasket part was entirely missing. So I quit using that brand and I'm back to only using four jars. Which reminds me it's time for me to put in an order because I am nearing the end of my seals and it's time to uh, restock before the summer season comes upon us. And we all know what that's like. It can come so fast and furious that we uh, aren't prepared for it. So now is a good time to get prepared. Well folks, what do you think? I am pretty happy with the results of this. I'm going to finish this off and these will go into my water bath canner which is over there. Um, just it's right at the edge of a boil. It was boiling and I turned it down and I'm going to put these jars in there and bring it back to a boil and time off um, 10 minutes to let, uh, let them boil at a full rolling boil or just under a full rolling boil for 10 minutes. And then I'll remove them from the canner. I'll take the lid off the canner first, shut the stove off, let the, uh, let the rolling boil um, die down. And only once it's died down completely, would I consider taking the jars out of the canner. So, uh, folks, I hope that you've uh, learned something here today or that you have um, picked up a new skill. Well, folks, here we are, all finished, still hot. I've just taken the jars out of the canner and I am pleased with them so far. I will um, be happy to add these to my pantry especially here in January. So folks, I hope that you've enjoyed today's uh, video and that if you have, you will uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, give the video a like and share it with your friends. And until next time, folks, I hope that you are all well and safe and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.